welcome to another episode of Masonic Curious. Today I'm joined with Right Worshipful Michael Leonard, who is a the current District Deputy Grandmaster of the 23rd Masonic District here in Massachusetts. And Right Worshipful Leonard is also a past master of Trinity Lodge. Now, Trinity Lodge has an unusual history behind it. And I'm going to let Michael explain a little bit of that to you. But just recently, uh, the Lodge was extremely proud of getting its 1778 status back. We are, or I should say, the Lodge is number six on the roll under the Grand Lodge of Scotland Charter. And that's a whole different story that we're going to talk about some other time. But in any case, Trinity Lodge is an old lodge, first founded in, I believe, South Lancaster? Correct. Very wishful? Yes. South Lancaster, Massachusetts. And for those who aren't familiar with Massachusetts, uh, Lancaster, South Lancaster is a very small but old town. So I bring to you right now, right worshipful Leonard. Thank you, Keith. Uh, so yeah, going back to that, uh, the South Lancaster, uh, um, Clinton was founded as part of Lancaster. It was a manufacturing town of Lancaster. They kind of broke away from Lancaster in the 1800s uh, and formed its own town after the Lancaster part of town was the farming part of it. Clinton was the manufacturing part of it, and uh, Trinity was had moved back and forth in between Lancaster and then formed in, in, in Clinton in 1858, uh, and that's, a, again, a whole other story. But, you know, our, our, our proudest possession here is the 1778 Charter, uh, which has Paul Revere's signature as Junior Grand Warden when he was Junior Grand Warden of the Grand Lodge of Masons in Massachusetts. Uh, we acquired this through some great work through Right Worshipful Gregory Stahl, uh, when he was district deputy, when I was served in the east of, of Trinity Lodge, uh, this was being searched for. Uh, Most worshipful Roger Pajo at our 150th anniversary of the 1858 charter had stated that if we could find the charter, he would work diligently uh, to get our precedence date back of January 30th of 1778. Uh, while being in Grand Lodge, uh, right worshipful Greg Stahl was talking to uh, right worshipful brother Walter Hunt um, and he had stated to him, the way the story goes, that if we could just find the charter, we could get our precedence date back. Well, Walter Hunt said, what do you mean, find it? It's in the vault. Uh, right Worshipful Stahl had called me. We met at the Grand Secretary's office, and sure enough, here was our charter. Uh, the, the quest was on to get our precedence date back, and on Jan January 30th, 2018, exactly 240 years to the date, we received our precedence date back of 1778. Now, the ties to this charter... Uh, go back a very long time, but we, we were Morning Star Lodge of Worcester was born out of our, our lodge uh, through a gentleman by the name of Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas was said to have been raised in Trinity Lodge, and after he had moved his printing press to the Worcester area, uh, that he formed Morning Star Lodge. Uh, and in 1793, uh, Morning Star Lodge was born out of Trinity Lodge. Uh, at which time, later on uh, in around Keith, correct me if I'm wrong here, the Morgan Affair was sometime around the 1800s. Uh, 1827 to about 1840. Correct. So in that time frame, Trinity Lodge, along with Morningstar Lodge, had gone dark. Uh, we had, we had uh, were meeting in secrecy, as well as a lot of Masonic Lodges were meeting in secrecy. Um, and the charter was said to have been lost, but the biggest thing was we didn't pay our dues to Grand Lodge. And when we came out of that dark period, uh, Morning Star Lodge was able to come back out of it quicker than us. Uh, they were dark for about 15 years, and Trinity Lodge, unfortunately, was dark for about 30 years. Uh, so when we came back out of that around 1858, a brother by the name of E. Dana Bancroft had tried to reinvigorate the lodge here at, at Trinity um, and, and applied to have that, that our charter reinstituted, and at which time the Grand Master at the time said no, that wasn't possible because the charter was lost and there was monies owed to the Grand Lodge. Those monies not being paid, they denied that claim, but stated that they could start a lodge under the name of Trinity Lodge. Uh, and that Trinity Lodge charter was dated 1858. Um, and again, we, were, we worked under that charter up until 2018. Um, and again, back to Right Worshipful Stahl finding the charter and most worshipful, uh, Right Worshipful uh, Walter Hunt finding it and, and cataloging it for us, we were able to get that institution back of 1778. Paul Revere's signature is proudly preserved here as Junior Grand Warden. Um, and Joseph Webb is the 
was the Grand Master at the time, who uh, became Grand Master because Joseph Warren uh, was killed at the Battle of Bunker Hill. Uh, Joseph Warren, uh, Joseph Webb had become Grand Master after that. I know Keith, you had a story about Joseph Webb and the the order of why he why he had become the Grand Master after Joseph Warren's death. So, at once at some time, this may have been a Joseph Warren charter, but we're proud to have Joseph Webb signature as well as Paul Revere's signature as, as Junior Grand Warden. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you.